Hey guys, prior to the filming of this episode, we weren't aware of Ann Safford's passing earlier this year. Uh, she attributed so much to the culture of Mesoamerica and the Olmecs in particular. So that being said, we do want to attribute this episode in her memory uh, for Ann Safford's as she contributed so much. Thank you guys. Enjoy the podcast. I'll see what I can. okay. So, uh, as you know, we just got back from from a cruise, and we traveled to the Yucatan Peninsula, to the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, during our our stops, our port stops. So we visited uh, Cozumel, which Cozumel is right off the coast of the Yucatan, and there's ruins there and shit like that. And this episode couldn't be. At a better at, time. At a better time. Because, <clears throat> you know, we went to the Yucatan and we didn't go, you know, to try yeah. and study it. But it was amazing. I I do know why we have so much lost ruins and everything. Because we get to these sites. Because of money. Mm, no. We wow. get to we get to the sites. It's I think we have to give Mother Nature a little bit more credit. Because we get to these <laughs> sites. Uh, in, in particular, Honduras. In particular, Honduras. We arrived to the port. There's a one or two little shacks, little, you know, where people live and stores and stuff like that. The rest of the background is all forested areas. Same thing with Cozumel. Uh, same thing with, you know, it's hard to imagine the that. Yucatan and it's stuff. It's hard to imagine just forest. Like, I, it's, it's weird. Like, what, what's in that forest? Do you know? Any? Well, ruins. Just a bunch of fucking ruins. Um, A guy that I started listening to probably a month or two months ago, Luke Caverns, he speaks about it like, we have so much things that we haven't discovered in Mexico. And we have, and, and he says that once you visit these already tour, these already areas that are already ready for tourists mm -hmm. and all this stuff, and you, you visit these ancient ruins and stuff like that, if you walk a little bit over to the forest line or the jungle line, uh, you see a bunch of other ruins out there that haven't, that haven't, that they've been discovered obviously because, you know, people see them and stuff like that, but they haven't been properly excavated and and yeah they haven't been properly esca excavated or or learned about but on 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 our cruise that's like i said it was a perfect time and i was doing research for this episode for this podcast and i was just like dang we're fucking i'm i'm going to the areas that we're really speaking about which mm -hmm. um you know we're talk we're going to talk about mesoamerica and you know where civilization originates on it and that i was i was there I was there, and then, and it's pretty cool. Like the people, or or sorry, not the people, but the culture around there. Like it's the culture in the areas now is just tourism. It's like hey, yeah. you, you know, look at what was once. But it's fucking cool as fuck. It was a it was it was a good trip, Nipake. I'm glad you had a great trip. All right, so <clears throat> sorry about that little rant, but. Let's go ahead and get this kicked off. All right. Episode 003, the people of Mesoamerica. Of all the regions in the world, our blood can be traced back to the ancient people of Mesoamerica, a culture spanning from modern-day northern Mexico all the way down to Central America. The land's originators are the ones today we call the Olmec. But what was their story? Where did they come from? Today, we're going to try and figure that out. All right, Peter. So... What is Mesoamerica? Let me, uh, so I, I googled it and good explanation of what Mesoamerica is, is Mesoamerica is a historical region and a cultural area that begins in the southern part of North America and extends to most Central America. The geographic areas comprising of the modern day countries, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. So in so it's the same thing we we find the same thing of ancient of ancient cultures and ancient civilizations um like the egyptians it looks like when we first learn about the egyptians they're already a flourishing civilization without really having records of where they gained the knowledge we our last episode with the people of sumer it's the same thing it's cultures that pick up kind of already already with 
uh, technology and and advanced forms of ag- uh, agriculture and or at least they know of of something that that thrives them into what we call civilizations and in Mesoamerica there is a region that is now modern day Veracruz and Tabasco that the lands originators the Olmecs that's it's a similar story we we have the Olmec people in Mexico and they pick up with already having agriculture already having in a way, advanced forms of technology. In a way, they already travel their rivers and possibly the sea, and they have flourishing civilizations. And it goes back to the. It, it goes back to what. It goes back to is could there be a possibility of picking up knowledge where somebody else started from, or an inheritance of knowledge, and. Today, we're going to see if we can possibly figure that out. The Olmecs were the first uh, Mesoamerican culture. They were the first Meso- <clears throat> Mesoamerican culture before the Aztecs, Mayans, you name the rest. I don't know. the. Correct. Yeah. I, I, first, I first learned about the, the Olmecs a long time ago, um, a long time ago, and I didn't. I didn't have really have much interest in them. Mm-hmm. For I didn't really have much interest in them. And same thing with the Mayans. Uh, I really don't have much interest to them. Why is that? Because when I thought of ancient Mexico or ancient Mesoamerica, mm-hmm. uh, I thought that it was the Aztecs. Like I thought that oh, that's what that's what was before us. And it wasn't until uh, Graham Hancock spoke about the mystery surrounding the Olmecs is when I is when Oops. I started is when I started to diving in into more of the Mesoamerican culture and then I dove into the Mayans and then I and then I thought the Mayans was older than the Aztecs and then turns out that there's another civilization the Olmecs <laughs> uh, th- thanks to Graham Hancock and I it's a mystery surrounding this culture in in what I just explained that it it almost seems like it's a culture that picked up already knowing things. Well, I think that the that the reason why there's a lot that we don't know of the Olmecs is because most of their uh most c- kind of most of their culture has been lost. That is the reason why and Aztecs and Mayans I'm not saying we have so much of them but like we kind of have more than the Olmecs for sure, you know. Yeah, so um, I think that's why and it, it's obviously it's very easy to focus on something that we have a lot of knowledge of and if obviously the omics we don't have nothing of like what else can we speak about it it's just this is what it is this is what it was and this is where it is now and that's it (laughs) something that's going to come up here later in our conversation in our conversation is that i think as we dive in and as we learn about the omex here i think the reason for that that we don't have much about much information about the Olmecs is because they preferred to live in kind of these little huts or in smaller populations or in like non megalithic structures. They prefer to live in an area like that more in tune with the jungle and their surroundings around them is what they preferred. And then they used their is to be it's to what be it's to what is believed. And then they use these big um terraces or or mounds or pyramids and then they use that for um ceremonial purposes and i think that's why we don't have because they didn't live in big and in, in big megalithic environments i think that's why we don't have a lot of them because uh-huh. everything just gets consumed by the jungle and as i was saying when when we on our trip to the yucatan peninsula we just got back um you arrive there and you see what is, you know, you see their little the beaches, uh, and their, stuff. their beaches, their ports, their commercial centers. But you just look beyond that and it's all jungle. It's all filled with jungle. So where do these people come from? Just there? Mesoamericans or sorry. the, well, old, no, the no, 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 I'm not talking about that. But like, like right now, if I was to go there, like, do, do they live around there? Yeah. Or do they live in the forest? No, no. The, the people there live okay. in in the commercial areas and actually all the areas that we visited it's 90 it's probably it's more than 90 percent of just tourism that's how they make a living 90 percent 
of just tourism. Hmm. And it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's cool. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's dive into the Omex. Let's dive into the Omex. Okay, so around 7,000 BC um, is when we see a, a very small transition of Mesoamerican hunter-gatherers that shift a little bit into agriculture. Now, I'm not saying this is where civilization starts, but you do see uh, the cultivation of of like seeds and bear or I don't know berries, but 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 you see, but you see them not. You see a lot of remnants of of seeds and and other crops around there that they're kind of harvesting more than they would just go out and pick it. Mm-hmm. And that that was around nine thousand. The actually, it's believed that corn maize. Uh, originates in Mesoamerica and the oldest corn cob that we've ever found in the world the oldest corn cob is dated to 10,000 BC or 10,000 years ago and what do you mean the oldest corn cob is it like like an actual corn cob or like a depiction of it no an actual corn cob it, oh really like we actually we found the oldest one in Mesoamerica that was just something that I that I picked up I, I didn't I didn't log it down well, but it's I something will, I picked well, up and well, I memorized well the reason I'm saying that is because uh I remember they even had, um, they didn't. They had this sculpture, this sculpture with a like a corn, a, just it was like a person in a corn tusk. Oh yes, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that, yeah. That's what I was saying. That's what I was yeah. like. Is that? Do you mean that? No. Or do you mean an actual? No, that's I mean, why I was, that's yeah. why I brought that. I mean an actual corn cup that we, that we dated to ten thousand years ago, and it was found there. <laughs> uh, it's it's a little de- the that topic is a little debated because. People think that corn didn't originate in Mesoamerica. However, I th- then there's also the conversation that the ancient people of Mesoamerica domesticated corn. So it's a, it's a little back and forth battle okay. between there. But, you know, like I said, I'm not in, we're, we're not experts in any sure. of these things. Sure. Again, we're, we're just, just like, we're just two guys having a conversation about yeah. things that interest us and bring and bring awareness just to, you know, if people want to do their yeah. research, it's like, dude, this is interesting. I yeah. don't know, you know? And uh, so in just the research, I, I found that the oldest corn cob is in mm-hmm. Mesoamerica. So, but again, there's two conversations to everything. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this. So the civilization begins around 1600 BC. So that's around uh, 3,200 years ago in the tropical lowlands of the Gulf of Mexico in present-day states, Veracruz and Tabasco. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people know this already, but the name Olmec is a Nahuatl language of the Aztec language, is what mm-hmm. the Aztec language is called, and which means the rubber people. And they were called that because in the region that they were at, uh, there's a Castilla Elastica tree that is where they most likely harvested their, their rubber from. And we actually don't know from a what from uh, the Castilla Elastica tree. It's a tree that I believe they harvested the rubber from. Oh, and shit. we only know this because of the Aztec people that the name Ol- Olmec comes from the Aztec people, uh-huh. which is well, yeah, later yeah, down the yeah, road yep, yep. or earlier down the road. It's cl- closer to us is earlier, right? It's er- yeah, earlier down the road. Later down the road is closer to the Olmec. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I got mixed up with that. Now, during during my research about the people of about the Olmec people, I noticed and I quickly understood that we know very little about them. The videos that I that I used for the research or the articles that I re- used for the research or the books that I used for the research, it they all say very general things about the 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 omex they all speak about we're gonna we're gonna discover here but they all speak about the colossal heads they all speak about uh in generalities we don't know much about their religion we don't know much about their technology but the way we know what we know about them is because of linking different things together and assumptions as well Mm -hmm. But I found it very interesting that we know very little about them. And in other regions, and in other regions uh, 
around the world. We know a little bit more. We have a little bit more context to where they come from. There is a little bit of a mysterious factor to other ancient civilizations. There is a little bit of a mysterious factor to other ancient civilizations. But the Olmecs, we lack a lot of understanding about, about who they are, where they come from, and what is it that their day-to-day -day life look like. But again, but again, we, we know very little, little about them. And I repeat that. I think the reason for that is because they decided to live in a village setting, more in tune to their surroundings, more in tune with the land than, um, and then they only used their megalithic centers, their big pyramids, mounds, terraces, whatever you want to call them for as, as ceremonial centers, mm -hmm. which you know, and I, I want to see what you think about this, but there is, I've heard of this on the Joe Rogan experience with Joe Rogan and Graham Hancock, and they speak about what technology is today to us, you know, cameras, laptops, all this stuff, what technology is to us, not necessarily translates to what technology was to them. And we don't, when we speak about ancient people and their technology, we don't speak about they had iPhones and all this stuff. We speak about different things, different forms that maybe they have access to that we don't have access to. And supposedly we're more advanced, which I get it in, in our lens. We are more advanced. We have bigger cities. We domesticated the basically the entire world in a way. We go to space and we, all that we stuff. We go to but, space. But the reason why I kind of contradict that is because they were more in tune with the actual nature, with the actual nature, with actual the earth exactly. uh, they were more tuned in with civilization they knew what their purpose i mean not they didn't know what the purpose was because we nobody knows but i feel like they kind of were more less greedy love uh sh you know show love care for people uh uh let's let's have babies to to uh continue our you know our generations going and going and going and i feel like now it it we can be more techno uh technology advanced but we don't really want to have kids uh we don't there's just a lot of things where we don't where we're not advanced we're not in tune with what is out there we all we do is stare at a at a phone at an ipad and <laughs> and uh and we feel like we know everything and we want to comment on your thing, on my thing and oh, this and this and that without having to know the person. And you, you want to make them feel bad or not only that, but you just uh, you're just not in tuned. Uh, just go outside, bro. You just go outside, enjoy nature. That's what our body was known to do. I think uh, I was watching Gary Brecca the other day was saying I don't know if it was Gary Brecka or I think it might have been him that uh, we are actually are we're supposed to be with nature. We're supposed to be outside at least 80, 85, 90 percent of the time. But guess what? We go from an enclosed house to an enclosed car to an enclosed building to an and Luckily for you and I, at least we're enjoying some nature, whether, you know, you work in construction and I work, you know, out in the field. And we get that, you know, vitamin D that we sometimes that a lot. We still lack it. Yeah. We honestly still like it. So I feel like in that way, no, we're not as advanced. And, and then people after you, you know, that what you just described. And then when it goes to extracurricular activities, you go to enclosed environments. Exactly. And fucking drug yourself with alcohol and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely not healthy for the body and it's not healthy for the mind. And but in, I, in that way, and in that way, the ancient civilizations all all around the globe, they were more advanced spiritually. Yeah. Which there is a connection. There's it, you have to have the connection with where you universe, come from. Yeah, the universe. Whether it's what whatever belief you believe in, and that is why I don't think we're more advanced. You know, uh, we may know that there's more that there's a lot of exoplanets, and we've been to the moon and whatnot, and this and that. But even then, that it's like. You know, you mm -hmm. did, you don't, we're not in tune with nature. And the most important, you know, you know, what's one of the most important things we should do 
which I do that now. I started doing that is grounding, literally grounding hey. yourself. And I go outside and just take off your shirt and just for 30 minutes, maybe stretch and ground yourself too. And, and your shoes too, right? No, you got to take off your socks. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, you're, walk, your shoes you know, and your socks. See, and after that, you're like, what the fuck did I just release into this earth? Yeah, I've, <laughs> uh, I, I've seen that there's, there's actually plenty of videos going around. I don't know how accurate the testing is, but like, they they test themselves they test themselves with uh, those uh, electrical machines you get me the mm -hmm. to see if there's if something is live yep, yep, yep. or grounded oh I get what you're trying yeah, to say yeah and and they put it against their skin and they lift one foot up with which has the shoe on and it gives them a, a you know a low hmm. a low a low grounding and then they put their other uh, foot on the ground which is the bare foot and the they have the shoe lifted up and it's you know the whatever their those calculations are or whatever you're so much more grounded and in tune with your environment and obviously we don't with fucking shoes that you know have rubber soles and plastic soles and all this For stuff sure. but so I, I that is why that. so that is why i feel like we're not as advanced we push ourselves away from all this stuff and um i really do believe and this is just me speculating things. I do believe that we are less advanced now than when we were back back in the day. Whether it's with the Egyptians, whether it's with the Olmecs, whether it's with whoever created, you know, Gobekli uh, Tepe, um, just all that. It's it's definitely perspective. I, I I get what you mean. You but know what I mean? Obviously, I get what you mean. But obviously, it's... no. Obviously, I'm not saying that that is why. But why I think is because like. We're humans, bro. We're, we're supposed to connect with people, not hate our neighbor or, yeah. you know, have a communities and talk and discuss. And I don't agree with you because of this, you know, but now it's just like I'm just tweeting or. Yeah, I, I get what you mean a thousand percent. But yeah, it is definitely perspective. Oh, yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, yeah, I'm not saying that I'm yeah, I'm just the, saying that that is what I, I feel like in that. Spiritually, yeah, for spiritually, sure. Spiritually, for sure. A thousand percent. Spiritually, not, you know, <laughs> you know. I fucking have an iPhone and I can connect to somebody in Russia. Like, that's, you know, that's amazing. You're across the world. Obviously, we're more advanced, but. Then yeah. You know. So, back to the Omex. Man, that was a, a good little tangent that we went off there. So, yeah, back to the Omex. Again, little is known about them. Uh, we know a little bit of their society and political system, and we're going to see here later on, but the colossal... Okay, you know what? Let me go with this real quick. So, the reason why we know about the Olmecs, Pete, is because of these guys right here. These are called the colossal Olmec heads, and the first one that was discovered was in San Lorenzo uh, by a farmer. I believe. And I think San Lorenzo is the first of the Olmec cities. I'll pop up on the map here shortly. But because of these guys is why we know of the Olmec civilization and why we started looking into the Olmec civilization. And these are colossal heads made out of basalt, which basalt is a volcanic rock, slowly cooled, I believe. And they're made out of solid pieces. And this is why we know about them. Now, let me get this off and let me put a map up here. So the Olmec, the Olmec is believed to have had these right here. Modern day Veracruz and Tabasco is over here. And San Lorenzo was where the first Olmec head was found and is also believed one of the first Olmecs, if not the first Olmec city. It's between San Lorenzo and Tres Apotes. But the most prominent of their cities is La Venta. It's, it has the, the most advanced features about it. Which that's, I, that's I think La Venta is like when they were at the height of their uh -huh. of their civilization because San Lorenzo, we find that after San Lorenzo is is passed, it was deliberately defaced and deliberately destroyed. We don't again we don't have much information about mm. them, but it looks like they deliberately destroyed them. And as the fall of San Lorenzo, we have the rise of La Venta. And this this kind of depicts the and the reason why they think that all that is um, where 
like sightings is is it because they found all these these uh big um sculptures or why so the Olmec, the colossal Olmec heads, we have only... Uh, I think it was we, like 17? Yes, yes. 17, I think? We have currently found 17. Currently, you know, there's still that that it factor that there could possibly much more out there. Dude, imagine just like <laughs> being alive for whether they actually announce, you know, Quebec Tepe is, is this, you know... Yeah. I don't know, it's just... I yeah. can't wait for all those stuff. You know, I mean, we just captured a black hole in... I can't remember what year, 2014 and like, 20. I could be wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't know. What I'm saying is we just discovered that stuff. It's just these new discoveries. Just, yeah. You, you feel like that you wouldn't in your lifetime. But but the beautiful thing about Mesoamerica is that everything is, we have not, we haven't even scratched the surface of everything we know in Mesoamerica, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Olmecs, the the Tarasco, the Tarascan Empire, all these other areas in, in Mesoamerica, there's still so much more to be found. There's still way so much more to be found. And I will show you here. You know what? Let me just show you now. And this is thanks to Luke Caverns. Again, like I I discovered this guy because of the because of the concrete podcast. And ever since, I've just been obsessed with his fucking content. And Luke Caverns just speaks about, or he speaks about a lot of things. He's mm-hmm. a, he's an anthropologist, and he speaks about a lot of things. But he specializes in Mesoamerica, which is beautiful. And is that my phone? I think so, dude. Hold up, let me. It's because your laptop, no? I thought I had it on sleep. I know it's not mine. I couldn't find mine in oh, your shit. Apple Music library. You can ask me to play. <laughs> what the fuck? Are Sorry you? about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to mess with my laptop here and Siri came up and fucked this shit up. All right. So the beautiful thing about Luke Caverns is that he discovers is that he specializes in, is in Mesoamerica and we don't have a lot of people speaking about Mesoamerica. We have everybody speaking about ancient Egypt and uh, the Middle East, Quebec, Tepe, Turkey, and all these different areas that in their respective right are very interesting. And there's so much going on over there, especially with Karan Tepe and Quebec Tepe. But we don't have a lot of people speaking about Mesoamerica. And Luke Caverns is speaking about it. And he's actually going on an expedition uh, soon in 2024. And he's going to go and discover and try to discover ancient ruins of rediscover ancient ruins of of Mesoamerica. Mm. Um so let me tell you why there's still so much to be discovered. So we have modern day Veracruz, Tabasco over here. This is where the Olmecs this is where the Olmecs uh thrived over here. But when we look at all this other stuff, we still have look at all this greenery over here. We still have all these things over here, all this greenery. This is where I was at, Cozumel. Mm-hmm. This is the you can. This is the Yucatan Peninsula over for here. Sure, for sure. We were over here. We were we were all along this area over here. And look at all this greenery. Look, there's still so much more to be discovered. Have you heard of Graham Hancock talk about? We haven't. We don't know anything about the Amazon. Yeah. Look at all this greenery. And let me just make a quick sandwich. <laughs> Look at all this greenery. Right you got to be fucking kidding me. So it's it's diff- it's difficult to get to these areas. It's dangerous to get to these areas, which is why we still have so much more to discover about Mesoamerica and their cultures and their civilizations and all this stuff. So back to what you were saying. Yes. Uh, so this is because we found remnants of Olmec artifacts in all these areas. And the 17... 17- colossal heads actually i wrote it down here so 10 of the 17 heads have been found in san lorenzo their first site Mm -hmm. four have been found in la venta two in tres zapotes which tres zapotes i think i might be mixed up on this but i think they think tres zapotes was their first site but san lorenzo was the first one that was discovered something around those lines i'm probably wrong but something along that and then one in La Cobata. Where's La Cobata at? You see it anywhere here? Uh, 
I don't. La Covata. Yeah, I, I don't see it. But one in no, La Covata. I don't think it's on there. So ten in. <clears throat> so again, ten. So the Olmec seven seventeen Olmec heads, ten in San Lorenzo, four in La Venta, and one without a helmet. Is there? I think I think there's one without a helmet. Really? I swear. I. I was trying to. I was trying to. I don't know if I even seen all of them or I just seen double of one, but I thought they all had helmets. Yeah, well they do, but which we don't. Do we know what a helmet depiction is? I think they were saying maybe for for for, for war or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know either. But they, I thought that they all had helmets. If not all, most, most, mostly no, all of them have all helmets. No, I think all of them, all of them that we found do. Besides one, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's one. Which you know they, uh, you know they actually there's some uh, universities. I think Chicago and some other ones that I can't even off the top of my head. They have uh, replicas. Replicas of the yeah, heads? Yeah. What? It's cool. Like, uh, yeah. They like carve them and all this stuff from. Uh, I don't know what. I don't know what they carve them or whatever. If, what what whatever material replicas. it is, but it's just replicas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have them. I was like, oh, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's fucking badass. Uh, I actually. Let me let me read this to you real quick, and this is from. I copied and pasted from the World History of Encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. Talking about the Olmec heads. Let me just read this to you real quick. Let's see if I can read. So, 17 heads have been discovered to date. 10 of which are from San Lorenzo. 4 from La Venta. Which are two of the most important important Olmec centers. 2 in Tres Apotes, Veracruz, and 1 in La Covata. The heads were each carved from a single basalt boulder. Which in some cases were transported 100 kilometers or more. They're, so, they were transported... That's 100 kilometers, what, over 50 miles or more to their final destination, presumably using huge basalt, presumably using huge river rafts whenever possibly and log world on the land, which so they used rafts, river rafts mm-hmm. on sea. And then have you seen the method that they think or one of the methods that they think for yeah. the Egyptian stones? Yep. So they just roll them on sleds and and logs mm-hmm. so for easier for transportation sure, for sure. and the the principal source of this heavy stone was in Cerro Sitepec in the Tuluxa mountains so the Tuluxa mountains are are somewhere over here somewhere yeah somewhere over here actually i think i might have a picture of that too Hold on, I'll, I'll put over here here shortly the heads can be nearly 3 meters high and 4 point, either 3 to 4.5 meters so 9.18 feet and 14 feet. The heads were sculpted using hard handheld stones, and it is likely they were originally painted using bright colors. The fact that these giant sculptures depict only one head may be explained by the widely held belief in Mesoamerican culture that it is the head alone which contained the emotions experienced and the soul of an individual. So I got this information from the World History of Encyclopedia. Oh yeah, the source of basalt. Yeah, and the Tuluxa Mountains up here. So there's these Tuluxa Mountains, volcanic mountains up here. That is where they believed. Can you uh <clears throat> can you pull up one other can you do you have uh, all the seventeen heads that they found? No, I don't have all the no, seventeen heads, okay. but I can definitely pop up a few. So this is the one that I already showed you here. For sure. This is I think this is one of the fir- this is the are, first one that was discovered right here. They all are similar, aren't they? They're all very similar. They're all similar. They all have helmets. Most of them have helmets, but they all have different facial features. For sure. So So are it, they depicting like a a leader? We don't a know. God? We don't know much about sure. them, but it is assumed that each Olmec head is a ruler or a, a, a deity ruler, a, a god or some, something mm-hmm. along, the line, along those lines. Yes, it's, the, it's believed that they, yes, that it is that. However, these Olmec heads, these Olmec heads were deliberately buried as well. 
I'm not sure if you knew that. So on purpose. Yes, they they were buried on purpose. Obviously, we don't know by them or by somebody else, right? Well, it's believed that it was used as a ceremony. Again, it, oh. they scholars draw these links that that we don't know much about their their politics and their religious studies and all this stuff. But if they carve these one heads, which is to believe that it's what carries the soul, and then they di- and then they make these structures and then they dig them, it could be part of a ceremony of paying tribute to one of the rulers mm-hmm. and all we can do is just draw draw lines and conclusions and stuff like that here's another one right here again wearing a helmet here is another one i didn't get i didn't get oh i don't i don't have a picture but the most pretty looking one is at the front of the museum on where most of these heads are, are found. Do you know where these are all at? Did you say that already? Do you, would you know, I guess? Yeah, a lot of them are, are in the museum. Okay. A lot of but them they're are... They're all separate, right? Here, one here, one there. Not, they're not all kind of together. No. No, they're not. So... They all yeah. kind of have like the same almost... I mean, obviously they're different faces, but... Kind of like the thicker lips and wider noses. And yeah, so that is um, a theory that it is believed that that the Olmecs have African features. Mm. Um, I fir- It's not Graham Hancock's theories, but I first heard it from him, is that it is believed that it's a seafaring civilization that traveled to the uh, Americas. And it's believed that it's the Olmecs because of their features. So they have African features or Poly- po- Polynesian features or Pacific Islander features. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into that theory a little later. But yes, it is. That is a theory that they traveled and founded this and founded this civilization. So what? where were we at? Oh, yeah, the colossal heads. So the colossal heads range between six and 50 tons. And they were transported by rafts and logs uh, on land. And they're transported, yeah, around 100 kilometers. So that's around 50 miles. They transported these 50 miles. Luke Caverns talks about that these were, these Olmec heads were sculpted on site. So he says that the weight that when they transported them, it was just a big basalt rock. It wasn't nothing finished that they trans so the original oh. when they first transported it, it could it weighed way more it weighed way more and then they carved it on site mm. is what he speaks about now something very interesting is something very interesting is that the Olmec heads aren't the only megalithic structures that these Olmecs build they also build these altars which depict uh you know people like this this is it and it could be believed that this is one of the rulers or this could possibly a god. But the important thing about these altars is that not only are they, again, they're enormous. They, they're they around the same specifications as the Olmec heads. But not only are these altars here, but it's believed that once a ruler dies out of the altars that the ruler used, they carve the heads from these altars. And this is mainly on, I I learned this from an anthropologist and an archaeologist that spent most of her life in the San Lorenzo region. Her Mm -hmm. name is Ann Cyphers. She has a beautiful learning lesson about the Olmecs. And she talks about that. And she talks about that the Olmecs heads were likely recycled from these altars. And you have different features. I'm not sure of any of the features we can see here, but like, in particularly like this this Olmec head here, the back of it, I don't have pictures of it, sorry, but the back of the heads were mainly polished and flat. And then on the side of these areas, you have these where the ears would be that are kind of in line with these, with the same, with the same grooves that were here. Uh-huh. So it's it could be very possible that the Olmecs, that the Olmec heads are recycled from the altars that Ooh. the rulers used. It's a theory, but it's a very... It's, or how they looked like. Yeah, or how they look like. And there's a lot of evidence that, that 
goes towards that, that they recycled is probably because it was very fucking hard to get a large basalt rock from a fucking mountain and then transport it <laughs> sometimes around 50 miles around. So it could be that could be a possible reason. And they also have they also have a lot of uh, different things like they have. So let me get. Are you done with these pictures? Yeah. Actually, I'll leave them just in case. But they also have um, a lot of other things like the Masonic floors. These weigh a ton as well. Out of made out of basalt too. They have artifacts. They're jade artifacts that are found all around Mesoamerica. The reason why we think their trade was their trade reached that far, you know, from uh, central Mexico down to Central America is because of their jade artifacts. And jade jade is not something that originates from where the Olmecs ruled. You see, here's a source of jade up here. And then jade. there's a, Yeah, jade is a form of is a is a precious is a precious rock. Okay. And then down here in Guatemala in the mine regions. And we find artifacts of jade up into the, the the new civilizations, the Mayans and the Aztecs. We find their the Olmec artifacts in those civilizations as well. So here's a picture of one. Here's a picture of this guy right here. It's called a wrestler. Hmm. Now, that theory about the Olmecs being not native to the land... Is because we see a lot oh, of hundred percent. I can... is is because we see their eyes, and uh, we see their eyes features, their lip features. It it people that think... doesn't look. That looks more like a Asian, uh, Asian descendant. You know, po Polynesian. Now, you know what? We'll just we'll just get into it later. Sorry. And yeah, that um, they also have these tombs as well. I never knew anything about this. I think this is in La Venta. I never knew anything about this until Luke Caverns. These are basalt columns. Another megalithic structure. These are enormous. And then this... Those really, are stones? Yeah, these are stones. These are basalt stones that they carved and they used as a tomb. Um, and at one point there was... I think there was someone in here, but they, they're long gone due to, due to de decomposition. Here is we underestimate uh these cultures a lot, don't we? You know, that's where that's where all these fringe theories and these conspiracies come from is because either one, we don't have the knowledge to to give you credit to them for that. To give credit to them. And then because we I think underestimate these cultures a lot is why all these conspiracies and fringe theories come from. But these were very, very at in their own right advanced cultures. I just like to see someone fucking try to do that right now. I I know I can, I wouldn't know where to start. This is another one of their giant sculptures. This is a guy right here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's but it's it's something that I do understand, and as. As ancient civilizations come up more and more and more people start to get interested in these and then they start rolling with these theories and these fringe theories and these conspiracies because they're very popular. There's something really fun to to think about. And then archaeologists start getting bashed because they push these theories away for a reason because there's just not enough evidence. And there's I, not you enough gotta understand that too though. Yeah. You gotta and, understand both sides. Oh yeah, and uh, and it mainly because of funding as well. Is you know, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, currency is the mother milk of our civilization. You know, it's it runs everything, and these archaeologists or anthropologists they don't get funding for a lot of these things. So it's that comment that you just made that you would like to see somebody recreate these things, or you would like to see somebody recreate the Great Pyramid of Giza. I think or, that was already a quarry of stone. There's just not funding for this stuff. So it's 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 something that I understand that I, I myself repeat a lot of times, but it's something that I something sometimes lose track of myself because I'm so vested into these other theories that sound very lucrative and they sound very fun. But we got to look at the true pictures that there's not funding. You know, there's 
there's the establishment decides on what to push and what to discover and where to allocate their funding. Well, if there's nothing, if it's going to take 10 years to find a piece of stone, like that's not efficient, you know? And Cypher's dedicated 30 or over 30 years of her life on one site, San Lorenzo. 30 years of her life. Basically, all of her professional her, her professional years, Career. her professional careers on San Lorenzo. And because of her is why we have, is why we know so much about San Lorenzo too. She fucking, God bless her, dude. She, she spent 30 years in San Lorenzo, specifically to San Lorenzo, um, core drilling by hand over every 65 feet sometimes 60 feet in the ground to try to figure out the elevations and the floors of the Olmec civilizations and everything. And that's, that's in partly like why we don't go to, why we don't spend much time on trying to, Oh, I'd like to see somebody do that. It's because they're focusing on more important things. Mm. Yes. These theories are very lucrative, mm. but the foundation on why we even have these theories is because of people like Ann Cyphers that she drills by hand. She's had over 3,000 core samples in her entire career on the site of San Lorenzo. She basically mapped the entire San Lorenzo. Her and her team did. And it's because of that. We wouldn't have these other theories if it wasn't for Ann Cyphers, if it wasn't for people like Ann Cyphers, mm -hmm. to even have the foundation to even come up with these different theories. Let me show you this. Um, this is the first. Do you know who? This is the first depiction of of Quetzalcoatl. It's a Mesoamerican god, and this is the first depiction that we know of it. <clears throat> Bro, that was found <laughs> in Gebeki Tepe. Something mm -hmm. like, I mean, not that, but something similar to that. You're talking about this little purse right here, the little purse that is found. I thought it was a whole thing. Nah. Is it? Dude, I thought it was a whole thing. Like, almost, it looks exactly the whole thing hey, found here. in Gabaki's Heavy. See if you can figure oh, it out while, and while, you... while I kind of break this down. Yeah, but the bag. We come back to the bag. We're going to talk about the bag so much in this podcast. And we're like, people are going to be like, oh, we know what you're talking about with the bag. Yes. So, throughout all civilizations, there's a... Do you know who Jimmy Corsetti is with Bright Insights? Yeah. He has a phenomenal video about, about all civilizations around the earth and how they could possibly have a connection. And it, it's a good video. It's, it's like 30 minutes, perfect. But he speaks about these bags. And all cultures around the world have, have these little bags. Have these little man purses just like in a, a fun theory about this is that it could be these because they're also these bags are also attached to deities, the deities that are the bringer of knowledge throughout all cultures around the world. And in particular, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl is is attributed. Well, the God, again, the God existed with the Aztecs, the Mayans and the Olmecs and other regions in Mesoamerica. So they all have different depictions of what they of what the god represents and this or that but but Quetzalcoatl is a god that is depicted with the bringer of knowledge it's also the god that's depicted with the bringer of of maize of corn mm -hmm. as well and this little bag is found through all cultures have they the named have they named that structure this monument yeah that monument what is it called uh I'm trying yes to find yes it. yes this is monument this is uh, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> you just got a fucking cuss, huh? You know what? I I can't find it right now. But yeah, j just look up earliest depiction of Quetzalcoatl with the Olmex. And it, it's going to come up. Oh, but you're trying to figure out in, in Globeca Tepe, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure, buddy. I'm not sure I about could have, that. I could have been... Uh, maybe I was taking it too far, but I, maybe it was just about the bag. But I thought I, I looked into something that they found almost exactly the same thing in mm. Gobekli Tepe. 
And we'll see if you can find him. But let's move forward. So yeah, uh, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl. So it's Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, uh, or the further the the feather serpent is what it's translated to. Is a deity of the Mesoamerican cultures, and again, we don't know much about the religion or the belief systems of the Olmec. However, because of this, this is one of the reasons why we are able to attribute the lineage of the transfer of knowledge between the Mesoamerican cultures. The Olmecs have the first sighting of, of the feathered serpent. And then we know that it's a prominent God between the Mayans and the Aztecs as well. And this is, and drawing ties to what we know of the earlier cultures is why we can draw ties and theorize about how the later cultures, in particular the Olmecs, is what their belief system was. And they have depictions of a half animal, half human jaguar beings as well, which in, again, in the Mesoamerican cultures, the, or actually in all cultures around the world, it's, there's always this, this hybrid animal, hybrid human thing that everybody attributes as a deity. Huh. It's very interesting. Like, like the Anunnaki? Like the Anunnaki. Like the I mean, Greeks, I'm just... yeah, like the Anunnaki, like the Greeks, like the Egyptians. It's always attributed to these half uh, human, half animal. Yeah, to these hybrids. So the Olmecs. So we spoke about the jade artifacts from the Olmecs. There's the stone column tombs, the altars, uh, the mosaic layered floors. Um, it's most likely that the that the ball game originates with the Olmecs as well. You know, the where they bounce a ball off their hip and to get into this hole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I've that, seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, it's the Olmecs are attributed to the first depiction of that or the, the develop of the game. They have the first protobar and dot writing system to track to track numbers, the a number system. And I actually got some. Oh, yeah, I do. This is their number system. Proto bar and dot one two three four five six and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how they used. This is how they track time as well. The the Mayan and the Aztec calendar derives from. I didn't get a picture of it. Sorry. Derives from a similar a similar time system that the Olmecs developed as well. Well, didn't the Aztecs and Mayans get their? I'm not saying get the knowledge, but they got a lot from the Olmecs. It's believed that they. Got everything, 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 everything from them. Right? Yes, yes, and again, it's the Olmecs. They, it's a civilization that it they they come up on the picture already being a developed civilization, already being a developed civilization, and yeah. Here, here are more pictures of their of their sculptures and their little artifacts of their little beings. Again, keep in mind, look at their facial features. It's, I understand why people theorize that they come from another culture. Mm -hmm. I do understand because all their everything that they come up with it has, it has facial features that people don't attribute to being native to the to the area. I think this is La Venta. This is either La Venta or... No, this is La Venta, I'm pretty sure. This is what it looks like now. But it, back in the day, this would have been, you know... A pyramid. A, a pyramid, and there would be structures around there and stuff like this. Ah, uh, we haven't excavated that? We have. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't think I have... Or is this La Venta? No, this is San Lorenzo, I think. This is this is the... No, this is La Venta too. It's, it's now an earth mound. We don't have none of their stones around there anymore. Nothing like that. It's just they've already. Uh, uh, it's all been consumed. But like the, they can't excavate it. Is what I'm saying. The land they haven't at least. Oh. The land in Mesoamerica is something that we find. It's soft. It's it, we find everything being consumed by the. Oh look, this is what I was talking about. You arrive to these areas, in these, it, it, to, you arrive to these areas and there's jungles all around you. But it's very soft ground. It, it looks like it almost as if everything sinks in there. Now, now let me let's let's get into something very fun. 
uh, which is the mysteries sur surrounding the Olmec civilization. Let's see, where do I start? Okay, so real quick, we'll go to this one right here. I learned this again because of Luke Caverns. There is a one mile long structure in the Mayan region dating back to 1500 years ago before the height of the Maya world. This is it. One mile long structure. 1500 years before the height of the Mayans. Whoa. Now this is in Mayan territory, correct? Yeah. And it's to be theorized, this is only we only know this because of the ladder system. We have not done anything okay. to to <clears throat> get into this region to try to discover it. But because it's so far dated back, it's believed that this is a lost Olmec region of where the Olmecs could have possibly reigned because this is this is in the time frame of the Olmec civilization and and where it could possibly reign. And it's this is this is why I love the Mesoamerican region so much is because we still have so much to discover and it's scattered. It's scattered with, with remnants of lost civilizations. And this is a possibility. This is a mystery that we have yet to discover. And it's the possibility again of a, of another Olmec city further East than we believe that the Olmec traveler that the Olmec reigned around. We also, uh, another mystery is we don't know where the Olmec people went. We don't know how they vanished. We don't know how their civilization collapsed. It's theorized that it could be a possibility of drought and warfare, which in their rain months, the Olmecs, especially San Lorenzo, was an island. It was an island. It was a, it was an island and which the river canals that once that once went through there, they're extinct now. They the rivers don't go through there anymore. But during rain season, it would have it would have been like modern like back in the day, Teotihuacan, like where the Aztecs reigned and how they built their cities their city yeah their cities on mm -hmm. on on a lake. It would have been something similar to that. And in their drought season, well, would have been the 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 water would have been completely uh, out of there. So it's believed that possibility of drought. And then they migrated out of there, and then maybe they founded the later civilization or the earlier civilizations that can't that that are closer to us. Maybe they founded that, or it could be warfare that they just they just fucked each other up. That's crazy. That's crazy because maybe they went into like hide, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe they hid with a different. Yeah, or yeah, maybe or they just developed their. Our newer civilizations For like sure. they they just were the ones that developed because the mayans again i and i speak and i speak to you by a personal point but the mayan are the reason why meso why mesoamerican cultures advanced so much the mayans is where you have where you have these the, the mayans is who come up was where we see uh the learning of the cosmos the you know better writing systems, better number systems, better calendars, um, better architecture. It, the Mayans is where you see of where the knowledge is. I'm not sure if developed is a good point is a good word for it, but the Mayans are credited to have brought innovation to Mesoamerican cultures. Yeah. The Olmec, we don't know much about them. You know, again, they could have evolved into the the earlier civilizations, but the Mayans are the ones who, I, again, in the research that I did, are accredited to all the innovations that came later on in Meso Mesoamerican cultures. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, oh, there is, uh, again, Luke Caverns talks about it. There is a possibility of a site currently being excavated right now that has the earliest depiction of a pyramid in the Mesoamerican culture. Once this site is completely excavated and uh, the that uh, it, it's gone through carbon dating and all this stuff, we're, there's a possibility that we could have the earliest sighting of a pyramid in the Mesoamerican region, in all the Americas, the earliest sighting of a pyramid in this site. Um, we'll speak later about this because I don't have, there's not much knowledge around there. What are they? Uh, Why how, is it's, it's How far do they think that it is? You know, the, the date, where are they putting that at? You know, do I, think? I don't want to speak no? about it because it's okay. it's very theorized. However, we know that it's Mesoamerican, 
probably Olmex because there's also a possibility of a ball court being there where the mm. where the Olmex are accredited to the ball court. But it's very it's a very interesting site because it could be the the very first pyramid or the at least that we know of in the Mesoamerican region. Now, let's get into uh, you know what. Let me talk about San Lorenzo, the site that Anne Cyphers has spent 30 years of her life with. I want to talk about, before we get into the other theories and mysteries about surrounding the Meso, the Olmec culture, I want to talk about a little bit of more of, Salon, of San Lorenzo, again, possibly the first Olmec city that we know of, and Anne Cyphers' work around that. Again, Anne Cyphers allocated over... Did you just find Anne Cypher like doing this research? Yeah, I did. I zero knowledge about a lot of the things surrounding this cultures and someone should get on our podcast. <laughs> and Anne Cypher is not retired from from her work, of course, but she spent she allocated thirty years of oh, her so life. She's still going at it. No, she's retired. Oh, okay, she's she, retired. She allocated thirty years of her life to the Olmecs and the site of San Lorenzo. Again, possibly the first city of the Olmec culture. Her team has done 3,000 core samples across San Lorenzo, evenly spaced 60 feet across and sometimes up to 60 feet down. And they sampled the region of San Lorenzo, why we have so much knowledge about it again. Mm -hmm. And she speaks about, she speaks about this culture in San Lorenzo and particularly like the, the upper regions. Do you know what a terrace is? A terrace is think of it, think of it like a stepped pyramid in a way, but it's their mounds. It's made out of earth, so you have lower level, middle level, upper level, and the top level. Okay. And that's how this site is. That's the earliest depiction of this of what this site is. The lower levels is where the is is where regular people live. That the people that cultivated the land, and then think of it poor middle class and the high class and then the ruling class that's kind of what you see here in san lorenzo that's kind of what you see in san lorenzo and thanks to her we know of the olmex architectures and the way they and the way they they um and the way they built now san lorenzo is the site is dated back to 1400 BC. Again, it was an island. The river channels are now extinct. And it was a great location during flooding season because of their terrace formations. Okay. So because of the terrace formations, the water didn't get up to there that much. Now, San Lorenzo, they didn't build pyramids, but the plateau that they built is seven times the volume of Teotihuacan. So all the earth that was included into building that terrace or that system is seven times the volume of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan is a very enormous structure. I think Teotihuacan is the the volume of Teotihuacan is bigger than the pyramid than the biggest pyramid in Giza. Oh really? Yeah, the volume. Oh, the, the volume oh, okay, of it, okay. not the height, yeah, but the yeah, volume yeah. of it is bigger than the pyramids in Giza. And and the mounds in San Lorenzo are seven times that. Seven times. Yeah. The cons there's the conservative size of San Lorenzo is seven hundred and seventy five hectares. That's he uh, one hectare is a hundred by hundred acres, right? I think so. Yes. Are you th you think so? Let me look at it real quick so I can not get this right. One hectare is oh two point four seven one zero five acres. Okay, I'm glad I I'm glad I got that. But so it's not a hundred by oh there's one that's a hundred by how big is a hectare yeah it's yeah huh maybe I'm wrong I don't know guys I'm dumb but <laughs> but conservatively that's conserv that this is. And Cypher's work. Conservatively, she says that the size of it is 775 hectares in size. And it is to believe that at the height of the population, they had 12,000 inhabitants at this site. Which Jeez. I think I think everything everything over 
10,000 or something like that is an advanced civilization. Okay. And then San Lorenzo is, is home to a red palace at the, again, at the top of it where the elite ruled. It's a red palace that has remnants of a workshop where they would repurpose a lot of these sculptures that maybe break down or that, uh, you know, the, the rocks break. But yeah, her, her work at San Lorenzo is, is, is amazing. Again, it's why we know so much of the Olmecs. So much of the Olmecs. And Cyphers. Mm -hmm. Shout out to fucking Ann Cyphers. Yes, sir. Her her mentors, when she when she was first getting into archaeology and anthropology, her mentors are the ones, I didn't get their names, but her mentors are the ones that did the majority of the work on the Olmec heads. Mm. And when she decided that she wanted to dedicate her life to this stuff, she got a backlash because she wanted to find for their floors. She wanted to find their floors. She wanted to find their homes. She wanted to know about the Olmec people instead of focusing on the fun stuff, the Olmec heads. And she got a lot of backlash for it. And, and she was like, Oh, you're probably going to be a failure then for digging up floors instead of, instead of following in the steps of your, of your, of your mentors. And Next thing you know, she spent three years of her life, and three years later, she is she is accredited to being one of the most important figures in the you Mesoamerican know, teachings, in particular because of her work in San Lorenzo. All right, well, I gotta go to the restroom. All right, my friend. So let's kind of let's kind of get into. The fringe theories or conspiracies surrounding the Omex. And we've kind of already touched bases on, on a few of these things. But, we, yeah, and we already kind of touched bases on, on a few of these things. But let's just go ahead and go over kind of the, the, general, the general theory about them. Okay. So, let me go ahead and pop one up for reference. Again, I don't know who came up with this theory, but I first heard it from Grim Hancock. And it goes that uh, that the Olmecs have African or Polynesian origins. And this theory is mostly based entirely on observation due to the Olmec colossal heads having African or Polynesian facial features, which they do. And it is said that a seafaring civilization brought the knowledge to the native people and taught them astrology, architecture, art, and so on. Basically, everything that the Olmecs know and basically what the Olmecs are. And, of course, there's more in detail about this claim or theory. But let's just break it down a little bit. And, again, we come from a very neutral perspective. Um, I personally lean or I personally have have ties to like wanting to believe all these different theories and ancient civilization and Atlantis and aliens are real and all this stuff. I do lean towards more to that because it's very fun for me. And, and I just love thinking of what if, what about the possibility? Yep. However, that can cloud my judgment and, and I can cloud my judgment and push me towards that and get me away from that new perspective. You, yeah. But Coming at this from a neutral perspective, that they're one hundred percent. That theory is one hundred percent true. They do have African or Polynesian facial features. Their their jade statues do have, in particularly Polynesian, you can because see it in their eyes because of their eyes. You can see it in their eyes, almost even the face. But yeah, but you know where there's a flaw in this theory. Hmm. Look at me. Look at you. We're Mexican. You know, our parents are from Mexico. We have, you know, a little bit chinkier eyes. You do too. You have broad lips. You look like a fucking Olmec, bro. <laughs> look at the camera. You look, <laughs> look at the Olmec. That's you. Look at the camera. That's you. I'll put you know, comparison. You know, broad face, broad lips, your eyes. You don't even have to deal with your lips. You look like an Olmec. You know, th the problem with this theory. You look like a jade, bitch. <laughs> But the problem with this theory is that it's based on observation, and I love that. Why? Because we're not we're not prof we're not professionals at all this stuff. But you know what's the fundamentals of science? 
is observation, observing something and studying it, which is what, again, we're not scholars. We don't learn this stuff. We can only come at it from a point of observation. Mm -hmm. And observation, let's observe what the region is. You know, again, these features, people think that they don't, they're not native. No, nah, they're native. They're, they're native. You know, it's, it's fun coming up with these theories, but these are native people from the region mm -hmm. and, you know, tied to, you know, th their side-by-side -side comparisons. And Luke Caverns on his, on his, he has a YouTube video about the Olmecs. He speaks about, there were done, uh, they did genetic test on the region, on the native region. So on the indigenous people and they, they don't have they don't have strong African origins. Okay. <clears throat> they don't have strong African origins. So for this part of the things, I think this is, I think this is, this does classify under that fringe theory. Something that, although it, I will keep my mind to the possibilities of the Olmecs coming from another civilization, you know, from, a, yeah. from the sea, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that in this particular instinct, I'm going to go with the teachings and that. Let's observe what the region is first, and then let's broaden out. Well, let's not try only, to figure out a little bit more of the culture first, and then let's broaden out. Well, not only that, but the way we don't know how they was carved, right? The Olmec heads? Yeah. We do. Okay. The, we have... So, basalt is not a relatively strong... Okay, okay. It's, it's very but, heavy. But, but even then, it's, you know, making something out of a, of, you know, a structure... It's not, it's not always going to be perfect, you know, Correct. There, yeah. there, it's not, you're not building it off. You're, you're not making it from a machine that you can, no. you know, and the software and put your design and then it do it like that. So you it's just no. people doing it. So that also, it's just a flaw. Yeah, it is. And, and the Olmex, when it comes to the colossal heads, uh, the mystery around them, around the colossal heads comes in. The transportation of them to their sites and we know that a lot of them were recycled but the trans bringing them from the mountain 50 miles and then putting them on on rafts it's that's where the mystery comes from but as far as this culture being from somewhere else no i think there is much more to be added to that that we already know it's just it's just a theory with no evidence okay actually it is it's just a theory yeah. with no evidence there is no evidence stating that now it doesn't mean that the theory is completely wrong though because again part of this theory is that they were a sea there was a seafaring civilization that not only brought knowledge but interbred with the indigenous people and all this stuff around this time around this time there was there was a seafaring civilization and they were uh fuck sorry Around this time, there was a seafaring civilization, and there were the Phoenicians. Now, across all the Mesoamerican cultures, the god Quetzalcoatl, or the, the deity of the bringer of knowledge, is that after a, uh, is after a cataclysmic event, a flood, somebody came, somebody erupted, and brought the knowledge, the knowledge to the people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again, we have... We have Quetzalcoatl That's in, from the bag. At, at the Olmec regions with the bag bringing knowledge, but in more particularly when you tie it to the theory that the Olmecs are a seafaring civilization from somewhere else, you have a monument, you have this monument that depicts a, a figure and these uh, pictograms mm -hmm. translate to the traveler. To the traveler and it has a beard and he has a, a a turban and he kind of does have phoenician characteristics and we know that at the height of the phoenicians they were traveling all around africa they're traveling all, all around the coast of africa and it's a possibility that they could have brought knowledge to the omex however it, it's when you put two and two together it makes sense but this this theory to me it, it's it's a little far fetched because how, I I find it more reasonable to give more credit to to give more credit to the to the Olmecs than to think of a 
region from the Phoenicians, a seafaring, the Phoenicians were a seafaring civilization, traveled from, from this area. We know they traveled all around the seas of Africa, and then they still have to come back over here and over here. That's, that's a theory. Or when you think about the Polypone the, 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 Poly the Polynesians, their Polynesian islands are over here. And then they sailed all the way over here and founded the Olmecs. It's a little far-fetched. And instead of giving these other cultures credits for the bringer mm. of knowledge to the, scene, to, to the sites, yep, why yep. can't we just give the indigenous Them. people yeah. more credit? That, that's where I come from, this theory of it being a little bit far-fetched. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> You, you see when you when you put when you put it into a different perspective now when you think of how the Olmecs created uh, or transported to the the colossal head dude I'm telling you that's you right there when you oh think God. about the Olmecs uh, traveling the colossal heads we think of something like this rafts something very primitive and so Luke Caverns is a guy that I that I look into a lot. I've mentioned him a lot through this podcast. But his mentor is uh, Ed, Ed Barnhart, I believe. And he traveled to Mesoamerica with a nautical engineer. And this nautical engineer made a, a software where you could input the weight, the capacity that a raft can carry relative to the weight of the stone heads. Okay. And it was very curious because in his in his YouTube channel, he speaks about that. If you make a raft the size as wide as the river can go, I don't know. It was some. It was the measurements were something crazy. If you make the raft so big that it can't even technically, if we're talking about theoretics, and it can't even go down the river, but we're talking about theoretics, it would still drown. The the ra the 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 rafts would still drown. And that's but that's relatively to rafts. Like, again, these guys are scholar people, but after looking at a bunch of things and stuff like that, we knew, we know that the, that the, that the Olmecs had some sort of canoes. So they have some sort of knowledge of flotation devices. They have small yeah. canoes. And there is, I think it was the History Channel, which I know we can't trust the History Channel a lot because they come up with a lot of these theories and these fringe theories. They do. Which but I like, I but like. they the, but they actually made a a study, and if you connect three rafts together and you and three canoes together, and you put a little, and you put a little bit of a, of a, of a platform to lay a rock on there, and they 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 did it, and they got they didn't get a a, a big Olmec head to to sit on it, but relatively to the size of the of the canoes, the three canoes that they put together, it floated and it worked, mm. so. According to the calculations that they did with the raft, they would take around 200 canoes, 200 canoes to get, you know, one of their lighter Olmec heads to float on the water. Now, 200 ca canoes would look ridiculous going across yeah. the, the sea. But if we give them, but if we give them the doubt of the benefit and said that they could create something much better than a canoe it's a plausible explanation on how the Olmec transported the, from, from the mountains, from the Tuxla mountain regions, got their rocks and transported them down to the sea and then to their final rest, uh, to their final destination. So again, instead of coming up with these other theories, I think that in this case scenario, the Olmecs him, had the capability yeah. to do all this stuff. Yeah. And we give him, we don't give him enough credit that they actually had credits for a better form of transportation, of, of transportation that they had the knowledge to create <clears throat> better boats or for better sure. rafts. And that's where I come from, like underestimating these people, these cultures, these societies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. They so did the Olmec receive or inherit knowledge? There's always the possibility that these ancient civilizations have the knowledge from somewhere or rather than develop it themselves because again the Egyptians, the Sumerians, the now the Olmecs, they're civilizations that come with already the knowledge. So there's always that possibility and 
but in this particular in this particular case these theories that these theories i think are trying to be molded into trying to get them work they're they're too far-fetched in my eyes again i'm Mm -hmm. i'm just i'm 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 already as i stated earlier i'm dumb but in my eyes it's i think it makes sense that the olmecs were able to do this to create this where the mystery lies for me is where do the olmecs come from (laughs) that that's more of a mystery than how they were able to deal with these colossal heads yeah, it's just we underestimate everything and we tend to know that we know where they come from or what where they got the knowledge from or whatever, but you know, it's just one of those great mysteries that I feel like it was just just playing around with it is fun. It's fun and to, you know, maybe connect one and two together. But like you said, maybe we should credit them for knowing all this stuff and doing all this stuff mm-hmm. we don't give him enough credit yeah spe- and then and then when you look into perspective on what comes next what comes next uh from from the omex you have the minds their knowledge the the knowledge of the minds just expands dramatically across Advances. all of mesoamerica yeah. and then the and then, and then you have the minds in particularly better with their number systems and their calendar systems and then their astrology systems and then you have the Aztecs better in their monumental systems like fucking uh, uh, Teotihuacan they built an entire city that rivaled or that can compare to any city at the time in the world in Teotihuacan and is that and, and is, you have Teo, the, is Teotihuacan the one where uh, I've seen I'm pretty sure you've seen videos where the guy like just claps or just says something super far he walks all the way and then no, or where's that one? Teotihuacan is the city is where is where Mexico Mexico is at now. Okay, but what you're talking but, about is the pyramid is a Aztec pyramid. It, it's still an Aztec though, at? right? No. Yeah, yeah. Where's it at, dude? It's literally the most popular one. Tenochtitlan. I thought it was. See, I, I I thought it started with. Look it up. Look it up real yeah, quick. Yeah, let me. Sorry, guys. Uh, we like to. I think we just like to bring stuff up without. We we know we're talking about it, but until we look it up, you know. Yeah. Okay. 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 For the third time, I'm dumb. Okay. So, Tenochtitlan, also known as Mexico Tenochtitlan, was a large Mexican altepet in what is now the historical center of Mexico City. So that's Tenochtitlan. Teo Tihuacan. Is what it, I'm okay. talking about. Okay, I sorry guys, I had it backwards. Tenochtitlan is Mexico, Mexico. And then Tihuacan is the pyramids that you're talking okay, about. That okay. if you clap or yeah, what yeah, if you yeah, speak, yeah. uh you, you get that yeah, I was like that I, bird noise. I know it was that, but I didn't know because I know there was two T's. The T's yeah. and they they're similar names. Yeah, they they were but yeah, uh Teotihuacan is, uh, yeah, you're, you're right that, and it's the, I think the most prominent um, tourism pyramid site in 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 Mexico. But yes, fuck, where was I at? Oh, and you have all these cultures, you know, with, with, with arriving, having their knowledge from somewhere. So, in if we were just looking at the Aztecs, oh well, they derived their knowledge from the a little bit from the Mayans and the Olmecs. The Mayans, what well, they derived from the Olmecs, but the Olmecs, who did they derive mm-hmm. their knowledge from? I think that is where the mystery lies in, and I think the Olmecs were definitely capable of the transportation and the cultivation of these of these colossal heads. But it, see, it's those things that you just think about, all right, and then. Before- and then before the Olmecs, and then how about before whoever the Olmecs got their knowledge, and then yeah. from before, and then and then you go all the way down to Sumerians, and then before it's just yeah, it's, uh, a lot of a lot of people do think that um that the that the civilizations of of the Americas came from the Amazon, and mm-hmm. from the Amazon they they spread it onwards. Mm-hmm. Because you know, from There's the Amazon, you have you have Machu yep. Picchu and the Incas, and then if you migrate up a little bit more, you oh, have mm-hmm. the Mayans, the Olmecs, the Aztecs, and then if you upgraded to modern-day United States, we have the indigenous people of 
of the. Uh, of that's a, that's a, that's good. And and it's a good theory because speculation. Also, in again, every civilization is advanced for the respect in in the respective. But it kind of fits it, you know, from the Amazons, yeah. which we haven't discovered anything. We know that there's flourishing from cities LIDAR. from lidars all over the Amazon, and then it spreads to you know the culture of the Incas, the Machu Picchu's, and all this stuff. And then that's a beautiful site in itself. And then it spreads further up. And then you have, you know, the Mesoamerican uh, monuments. And then you spread up. And then we have serpent our serpent mounds here in the Americas. And, Ohio, I think. And you have all these uh, mount these earth mounds, and that are that have that have uh, a meaning, astrology a, a and, meaning and to, meanings to them to astronomical purposes. I think I think that's a good theory. Uh, I think that's a good theory. Um. But it's like it's it's, don't know. it's bound to have evidence sooner or later. Let's hope sooner than later. All right. Well, that's it for me, buddy. Well, this is another. We wrap up another episode. Yeah. For intellects. This is a the Omex is a civilization that's gonna come up. Multi. It's a conversation that's gonna come up multiple times throughout. Throughout intellects. intellects. But the um, thing is that it's just so little of knowledge that we can only give what has been found. Yeah. We can't, you know. Yeah, well, it's not the last time we'll hear of the Olmec civilizations. But until then, that's all we got. Thank you guys very much. Episode 003, the people of Mesoamerica, the Olmecs. On to the next. Stay tuned. Thank you. Yeah, so I forgot a quick comment, buddy. Which is? It was a very quick comment that I forgot to comment on regarding the Olmec heads. Now, the Olmec heads, um, they all have an alignment with the faces facing east, which is a resemblance of the sun uh, rising right. from the east and setting on the west. Exactly. It's nothing very, nothing very major, but it's, it's something. You know, the sun is a very prominent uh, character within Mesoamerican culture with uh, summer solstice, and then uh, in Teotihuacan is where the pyramid at. What did you say? Uh, that's the city. Oh. Uh, Tenochtitlan, I think. Okay, but uh, when you get summer solstice, it it, it forms a snake along the pyramid. So it's just an example of the Olmecs having an understanding with the with the cosmos. And again, I completely forgot to mention the features of the other prominent city within the Olmecs, which is La Venta in modern day Tabasco region. And I completely forgot everything about that city to got to, to mention. Um and uh, as well relating their astronomical alignments which they do have that but it's okay we'll go ahead and uh cover it at a later point is that theorized though or no all or... all of basically everything that has to do with the olmecs is all theorized okay. because we know very little okay. and what did what do you think why, why do you do you i guess do you know why it's always about the serpent well what, what's having to do with them and a the serpent because of the serpent feather, uh, because of Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl is their most prominent deity or god, and it's the bringer of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the, the, the Quetzalcoatl, the, the feathered serpent, is what is in relation to. That's the same thing why in the pyramid of the summer solstice, I, with the yeah, I believe so. And uh, at a certain time, uh, with the sun, it creates a shadow effect on the pyramid of a snake going up the pyramid. Yeah, but there are uh, <clears throat> quick, quick topics that I forgot to mention. Again, I completely forgot to cover La Venta and all the beautiful things that are with that Olmec city. But it's, it's all right. We'll cover it at a later episode. Just wanted to make a quick note about those that I didn't forget them, but I completely forgot about them. All right. Well, all right. we'll oh, leave sorry. it at that. Yep, we'll leave it at that. Sorry, guys. Thank you, guys. Intellects out. Thank you. Once again. <laughs>